Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over this rifle right here. It is the Voyager 58 and this one is the 16 inch model. Uh, we picked this one up over from Aimster Plus and I just checked today right before posting this video. They're still in stock and I believe they're going for $999. So for a battle rifle 308 style rifle, which this certainly is, that's a very good price. So we're going to get into the details of all of it here coming up next. But one thing I want to point out is that uh, unlike a lot of videos, here we didn't do any actual like group size accuracy testing with it uh, simply because it comes with iron sights and I didn't have a way I still don't in, in fact have a way to mount an optic on there and I think it's somewhat unfair to a rifle for me to just shoot the groups behind uh, the rifle with iron sights because a lot of that variability is going to come down to me. However, what I will say is um, we took this rifle out to 400 yards with the open sights here on a, I believe it was 12 by 18 inch target, a shootsteel.com target, and with some uh, Freedom Munitions 175 grain AMAX out of 20 rounds. I connected with it 14 times. That's me personally um, at 200 yards with the eight inch plate, dust shoot steel.com plate. I rang it every time, I didn't miss once. So in terms of combat effectiveness, 200 yards with iron sights, it works just fine. So no issues there at all. In terms of precise groupings, though, I would have to buy a different top cover for it, put a scope on that, which we might do down the road, who knows. If you guys wanna see that, definitely post down below in the comment section and I might be able to make that happen. But anyway, what we're gonna do, let the dogs take a look at it and uh, then we're gonna get into the close-up details of the rifle, all the different features and all that stuff of it. At the end, we're gonna come back and let you know what we think of it overall. Generally, when we get into the details, we start up front and work our way back. So we'll do the same here with this rifle. So what you see on there right now is a suppressed armament systems adapter. This is a flash hider that uh, works with their Reaper MX can that I have. And you guys saw throughout the intro there. So uh, that replaced this. And this was the sort of comp slash break that comes with it. Um, very effective in terms of controlling recoil. And I guess in terms of recoil, we should comment on that. Um, even with this 16 inch version, which is one of the more lightweight ones out there from DS Arms, this one has very pleasant recoil. And one of the big reasons, of course, is that you can actually adjust the gas to the round you're using, which we'll get into here in just a second. But when you add the suppressor on there, it's even more uh, gentle to shoot. So compared to like an M1A or something like that, uh, similarly chambered 308, uh, this rifle shoots much softer in my opinion. But anyway, uh, the actual muzzle is threaded for 9x16 left hand twists. So most of your common FAL type uh, flash hiders and muzzle devices will fit on there just fine as this one did. And uh, moving back again, this 16 inch version, I believe they make an 18 and 21 inch version as well. This barrel does have the cut for the bipod in it. Not all of the DSA rifles do, but this one does. And of course we have our little sling swivel here and it rotates all the way around the barrel. For those unfamiliar with the FAL and particularly this rifle, the DSA Voyager, this is one of the cooler features of the rifle. It's the gas system overall. And uh, this is your adjustable gas block. You can see I have mine marked here with a paint marker. So that way I know the setting that it needs to be on but uh, it is adjustable. So you can actually adjust it to the load that you're using because certainly like mil spec loads, generally speaking, are gonna be a little bit hotter. Um, the weather conditions, of course, can also play a role, but you just turn it like that. It actually comes with a tool to adjust it, but you can do it by hand just fine there, as you can see. I do recommend though, once you figure out your setting to mark it, because uh, I had to do that twice, uh, both when we were doing it, uh, shooting the rifle rather, without the suppressor and then with. So I left that one on there, it's staying on there. So uh, up front here, we have what is known as a Belgian style gas uh, block up front, and it's removable with the A up front, you're in semi-automatic. 
and this little button right here on the side, if you want to remove it, you just want to push that and turn it. And one thing you can actually do if, to remove it, you just turn it 90 degrees and to turn the gas system off, you turn it 180 degrees. So that'll turn your rifle into a single shot rifle. Uh, if you're shooting suppressed, like hunting or something like that, it'll keep the action really, really quiet. So that is nice uh, for those that want to use this for hunting or any other purposes where you'd want to have a really quiet shooting rifle. So our front sight here is adjustable for elevation and there's actually a special tool designed for it. Um, I did not use that tool at all. What I used was just a two, two, three bullet tip and just two of them and you can turn it just fine. It works. It's probably not the recommended tool, but I can tell you it does work just fine and you can set your elevation with it. As we continue back, we're gonna disassemble the rifle, but uh, I figured we'll take the piston out now. You can see how it comes out. There's the little adjustable gas block portion. And then we have our piston and there should be a spring in there as well. And there is, and that's it. That is the, uh, piston gas system of the rifle. Charging handle of the rifle is on the left side and our mag wall here is kind of cool, particularly for right-handed shooters like myself. For some of you lefties out there, you may not be as big of a fan, but what it does is uh, as a right-handed shooter coming up here with your left hand, it allows you to sort of bring the mag in and guide it in and then rock it into place. Um, our magazine release is this little button right here and then that's our bolt lock. So uh, to release the magazine, you're just gonna push forward and come out sort of AK style. And then if we wanna lock our bolt to the rear, we're gonna put our mag in and uh, just run that to the rear. If you don't have a magazine in, you can just push up here in your bolt stop and then to release it, you're just gonna push down just like that. Speaking of magazines, the rifle does ship with one 20 round magazine. Now these are DS Arms magazines that are out there everywhere on the internet. Uh, you can find them just about anywhere. And of course these are metric pattern, as is this surplus magazine that we have here on the left. The surplus mags are kind of drying up here in America, particularly the metric ones like this rifle takes, but you can find them out there. And uh, even one in condition like this still runs just fine. For a lot of US shooters that are very familiar with the AR-15, your safety here is gonna be kind of intuitive. Uh, that's the safe position, that's the fire position. It is not ambidextrous, so for you lefties out there, again, get used to using that uh, index finger like most of you guys probably already are. Uh, the grip on there, as well as the stock, are new. Now, some of the old Voyagers did come with Styre surplus or new old stock uh, furniture, I believe. Nowadays, though, they're all coming with uh, new furniture made by DS Arms. But just pointing it out that you may see some out there with the actual Styre furniture on there. But the grip is you know standard FAL type grip and one thing I can tell you is a grip angle like this if you guys look at some of the shooting footage of me uh, that I noticed after the first time I shot it my elbow tends to be sticking out and I think a lot of that has to be has to do rather with the grip angle which back then uh, when these rifles came about that was sort of the popular shooting style and it's ergonomic if you want to be sort of chicken winging with your right hand but if you want to tuck it in it kind of puts your your wrist at a really weird angle kind of like that so I suppose the trend in a lot of modern rifles is to sort of square that up. And uh, this one here has the classic lines of the old FAL days. The rear sight on the rifle is what's known as a Holland style rear sight. It has just a standard peep to it. It's a little bit on the small side. For those of you guys used to like uh, the M16, it's sort of like the A2 small aperture. So very small, uh, it's very good for precision. However, in terms of speed, it's not the best or low light shooting. So pros and cons to each, it is windage adjustable. You have these little screws here on each side of the sight that you kind of use to uh, move the sight back and forth. And once you get it set, it really is rock solid, very durable, very dependable sight. Disassembling the rifle is very simple. We already took the piston out up front, as you guys saw. One thing you wanna do though, before you disassemble this rifle is make sure the hammer's in the cock position. So um, even if you think it's already there, you always wanna run the charging handle and make sure it is, because if not, it's a little tricky to get back together. So uh, to disassemble, we're just gonna move this lever here back and you can see it cracks. Uh, the upper from the lower receiver. Now, one thing I should point out here on DS Arms rifles is that this uh, upper receiver here is made of steel, but it is cast. So if you guys search out there on the forums, that may be something that you see as a bad thing, but um, there's plenty of cast rifles that run fine, in my opinion. Uh, quality control and manufacturing techniques are much more important than cast or forged for the average shooter. So we're just gonna pull our charging handle back and you can see our bolt and carrier will come out of there. And now if you want to separate uh, the upper and lower receiver there on the Voyager rifle, there's these little um, 
<coughs> screw here. And you can take a screwdriver or any sort of tool. You can actually use the rim of a 308 case as well to just sort of unscrew that and then you can do the rest by hand. And it's a two piece system. So you're gonna pull that out and then kind of push that side down. And let me show you what the other side looks like. You guys can see it there. So this piece comes out and then you can separate your upper and lower receiver. So uh, you can see it's very simple there on the inside. Not a whole lot of moving parts. You can see the chamber there has a slight M4 feed ramp. I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but it is there. The barrel itself is uh, one in 10 twist. I'm not sure if I said that. And it is a uh, button rifle that is online, so it's not chrome line. Uh, a lot of folks on Instagram and stuff were asking me that. So set these off to the side. Take a look at this massive beefy bolt uh, you guys can see there. It's a two-piece system, and you can actually get it apart. You'll see there, of course, we have our carrier, and then the bolt itself with our firing pin coming out here in the back. So uh, to get it together is literally just the opposite, so we'll start putting it back. Putting it back together, it's apparent that this rifle is a soldier-friendly rifle. It's just not a whole lot of small pieces. So we're just going to kind of slide our, our bolt and carrier down there into the receiver. And Send it home just like that. We'll line it here on the lower receiver. And not all of these rifles, I should point out, actually uh, disassemble like this in terms of the this little screw that I'm doing right here. Some of them don't have that. It sort of depends on the variant. So put that in. And then we'll screw that down. At this point, we're just gonna snap it together. You can see that little piece here that's hanging out the back. That's actually gonna fit right into the little hole there on the back of the uh, receiver. Just like that, snaps into place. Now you just wanna do a quick function check, run the uh, charging handle, point in safe direction, put it on fire, pull that trigger. And I should note the trigger on this rifle, in my opinion, is pretty nice. So uh, it pulls and breaks rather, I should say, right at eight pounds. Single action trigger, but has a real nice positive reset. And for a military style rifle, a pretty clean break. So the pull is a little bit heavy, but in my opinion, having a nice clean break is one of the most important aspects of a good trigger. I think we hit most of the big points on the rifle. A few things to just kind of go over though, um, if you're looking at one of these. Number one, when you first get it in, it probably won't be that reliable. And I say that because the rifle is probably actually reliable. You just have to actually set it to your ammunition. So just make sure you do that. It took me on um, the first time about 15 rounds to actually get it right. And I just cranked it all the way down to basically till the gas was off and then opened it up one or two clicks at a time. And then kind of went back and forth because uh, at one point in time it was cycling just fine, but wouldn't lock back opened it up a little bit more and it locked back every time. So it took me about 15 rounds. Then we put the can on there. It took me about another 10 rounds to get it just right. So you absolutely wanna, like I said, set it up for your load. It's very important. So that's one thing. The other thing in terms of reliability that I wanna point out, and I looked around the internet, it seems I wasn't the only one. Uh, unfortunately, we had a few malfunctions even when we got the gas system set up and every single one of them was with the factory mag. Now, I only have one magazine, so I can't tell you for sure that all the mags are bad or good or, or whatever the case may be. Um, I only have one factory mag and uh, probably one out of 50 rounds, I would say, with it, we would have a malfunction with the surplus mags, which I have a whole bunch of, I didn't have a single malfunction. So my guess is it was the magazine again. Could it just be that one? It could be, I don't know. But uh, that's sort of what we found with reliability. Other than that, once we got it set in, it ran like a champ. And like I said, very soft shooting rifle with the suppressor on there. It's a very, very fun rifle to shoot. Now, uh, for those of you who are looking to suppress the rifle, um, like we said, the thread pattern we already talked about. And uh, like most piston rifles though, not all, but most, it does have a little bit of a piston pop to it. So it's not gonna be quite as quiet as like an AR-10 or something like that. Um, of course, like we said, you can turn it down if you want it to be really silent though. Um, I think that pretty much covers it. Overall, I think it's a great rifle for $999. Like I said, over at AIM, there'll be a link down below. Um, I think it's a great value if you want a sort of budget-oriented battle rifle. Uh, this one's a great one. Um, 
there's just a lot of things going for it and mine certainly seem to work just fine. If you guys have any questions about the rifle, you can always post down below in the comment section. You can also post over at my Facebook page as always, but thanks for watching guys. Thanks for subscribing. If you haven't done so, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Make sure you guys hit that like button as well. And we hope to see you in the next video.